Welcome to Who's Who. In such a short time, this segment has become one of the most popular on this show. The famous host here is Mr. Sonny Siegel. Today, Mr. Siegel's guest is attorney Doug Gansler. Let's join these two gentlemen in their conversation. Welcome to Who's Who. This is your host, Sonny Siegel, on the Capitol Forum. My guest today is Attorney General Doug Gansler of the state of Maryland. Welcome, Mr. Gansler. Thank you for having me, Sonny. It's great. I'm delighted to have you on my show. Mr. Gansler, you have, in the last 22 years, held the position of Assistant United States Attorney, Montgomery County State's Attorney, and currently you are the Attorney General of Maryland. As Attorney General, you are the highest ranking prosecutor. How does your work protect Maryland's seniors, children, and families? Well, it's interesting. So those three jobs, I was the head uh, local prosecutor, I was a federal prosecutor, now I'm a state prosecutor, and they're all the same, uh, have the same function in terms of protecting seniors, children, and families from the criminal side. So we take uh, bad people and, and people that commit crimes, put them in jail, make sure it's done through a fair process, make sure that no innocent person is ever convicted, but we want to take violent criminals off the streets. But at the same time as Attorney General, not only am I the hi highest law enforcement officer in the state, but also the, the chief lawyer of the state. So we protect seniors and children and families by going after companies and corporations that are bad. Most, most people, most business people are good and they want to do the right thing and they do do the right thing. But there are some bad actors that will take advantage of seniors, for example, and will go after the, the drug companies or the national banks when they take advantage of people. So we go after them criminally and civilly. I see. So when there is <coughs> phone fraud and that kind of thing, you, you actually prosecute those people. Right. We prosecute people who commit scams against elder, uh, seniors and, and the things, you know, those uh, emails, your long lost relative in Nigeria has, has left you billions of dollars, just send us a few thousand dollars. Well, those are scams. Yeah. And we prosecute the people that, that commit those as well. Plus the murderers and rapists and robbers and that kind of thing. And, and, so, and, and then we do uh, the appellate work as well. For example, I argued in front of the Supreme Court of the United States and we won nine to nothing in that case. And that was on a confession case. And we also yes. argued recently in front of the Supreme Court to uphold the DNA laws of the United States so that when criminals come in, we could take their DNA, swab their cheek, and, and see if that DNA matches the DNA <coughs> from a former crime. I see. <coughs> I see. So actually, uh, keeping the law in order, keeping the consumer's interests at heart, keeping your citizenry's uh, um, interests at heart is quite your, your role. Right. The consumers and the victims of crime. Yes. And how does <coughs> that affect uh, companies that pollute the water the air, that sort of thing. Do you have control over them as well? Yeah, so while I've been Attorney General, for example, we've had the biggest asbestos settlement in the United States, in Maryland history. We've had the biggest water settlement in, a, in Maryland history. We had the biggest air settlement. One case, for example, talking about pollution, um, Maryland and actually the East Coast has some very bad air quality because the bad air comes from west to east. We have 14 of the 50 worst jurisdictions for air pollution in Maryland. So one case that we prosecuted was a company in Ohio oh, called wow. the Electric, uh, American Electric Power, AEP. It was a $4.6 billion settlement. They, were, they had 14 coal burning power plants that were putting all this coal, in, uh, coal smut and soot and pollution into the air and it was coming over Maryland and it makes it hard for our people to breathe. So we made them fix their, uh, their pollution problems up even as far away as Ohio. We've gone after companies in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and of course the bad companies in Maryland that contribute to our pollution while protecting the companies that do the right thing, that follow the law, and play by the rules. Now I understand that you are also the um, <clears throat> president of the uh, Attorney General's Association of America. That is quite a vote of confidence by all the Attorney Generals and I assume that's every state in the nation. Yeah, so uh, that's the National Association of Attorneys General, NAG. Some people refer to it kiddingly as the National Association of Aspiring Governors. Mm. And so we, um, <coughs> through that, you have a year-long project. And the project we did, uh, which is a nas of national scope, when I was the president, was uh, um, 
privacy in the digital age. So there's so many issues around privacy when you go on the internet and you buy a product from you know, Amazon.com or- and We Bar all Marshall. buy a lot of products. And we all buy products. And, and the question is, what do, what do those companies do with your information? To whom do they sell it? Do you have a right um, to opt out from them using your information for other purposes other than just buying the product? And is there a privacy policy that's put out there? And as technology keeps evolving, the attorneys general of the United States are staying on top of that. So yes, I was elected by the other 49 attorneys general. We were, I was elected unanimously because you know, we, uh, I'm, I'm a pro-business centrist Democrat and I try and be practical. You know, we have obviously a progressive on social issues, but fiscally and, and in terms of protecting consumers, that's where, we're, that's where we are. We're, 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 we want to make sure that everyone's protected. I see now. I understand <coughs> that you're actually running uh, for governor. Of yes, Maryland. and my mother's going to vote for me. Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And, I, and I'm going to say that there will be many people voting for you. Uh, well, I hope. And, I, you know, we've spent a lot of time with the Indian American community in, in particular and the Asian American community in general um, trying to get people engaged in the political process, you know, because, you know, 10 years ago it was harder to get the Asian American community involved. And now people are realizing that they're, they're, have, they're second and third generation and they, should get, and they should get involved in the political process. And it matters to have, you know, an influence with government. For example, so many, so many people in the Indian American community are doctors or business folks and who is the governor matters you know I'm running against a guy for example for governor that the plaintiffs lawyers endorse that, that wants to go after doctors and may raise premiums and get rid of caps and that kind of thing and so it does matter who the governor is so that's why we've engaged the Asian American community so much and so uh, regarding those demographics you know with the Indian physicians as many as there are and we're proud of that fact uh, about uh, tort laws, as an example, is there, uh, do you have a vision for the future as to how that'll work? And how about the reimbursements uh, that uh, Medicaid and others make to, to our Maryland physicians? Yeah, so what's interesting is to talk, talking about um, Indian American doctors and Asian American doctors, there are so many. Matter of fact, just last year, we had the first Indian American doctor is the head of MedCai, which is the Doctors Association in Maryland. Dr. Arjawat was the was the was elected the head and first in 138 years or something. And wow. and so the influence is, is is growing. My own doctor is an Indian American doctor. So um, so, uh, you know, and, and in terms of tort reform and protecting doctors, I think that's the key. There has to be a balance, and we need to protect our doctors. So, so many of us, I went to law school because, you know, there wasn't really anything else to do at the time, so I did. Doctors work very hard, mm -hmm. and we all, you know, whenever we're sick, we want to go to a doctor and get healthy, and there's got to be prescriptions that are available to help people that are sick and particularly with serious ailments. So we need to protect our doctors and make sure that we have doctors. But by the way, not only just in the um, urban areas, but in the rural areas as well. And in terms of we, have, we need to make sure that they're not constantly worrying about being sued, instead that they're worried about helping people. Now, are, th are there doctors that do make mistakes and do things that are wrong or bad? Yes, a few do, and, th and then they, they, they should be held accountable, and that's why they have insurance and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we need to make sure we protect our doctors and make Maryland a climate where doctors want to come to, not leave. I see. I see. Do you have people from... Uh Asia on your staff? Yeah, so diversity to me is, is one of the most essential components of being a, a government leader. I think our government, uh, the government should re represent and look like the people they represent. So for example, when I was the state's attorney, we hired the first Asian Americans, we've hired the first Indian Americans, uh, same as Attorney General. But it's not just hiring po people at lower levels, it's making sure we have people at all levels. For example, the head of our uh, criminal division, a uh, white collar criminal division, is a man named Rakesh Patel, an Indian American. Mm -hmm. When I ran for um, Attorney General, the person who ran my campaign was named Vivek Chopra, um, you know, an Indian. And so, I, you know, we, we want to make sure we have uh, Asian Americans, Chinese Americans, um, Indian Americans at all levels of, of government, top to bottom. And actually, <coughs> have you traveled overseas, uh, especially to India? I have. I've been, I was in India with the Aspen Institute group. I've been to with the National Association of Attorneys General. We've been to China. I've been to um, India. We've been to Japan. I've uh, been to many parts of, of, of Asia. And, and, and I think that's important because, you know, one of the things that I 
really value are cultures that, that are, we're, every, we're all from somewhere in America, so we're all from somewhere else. And that when, when you come to America and your family comes to America, that you protect the cultural heritage of that community because I think our diversity is our strength. Mm -hmm. Montgomery County, Maryland, where I live, is majority minority. And I think that's why Montgomery County, my, my, my personal opinion, is that's why Montgomery County has thrived and doing so well because of our diversity, not a, as, a, as a bad thing, it's a good thing. And we need to embrace diversity. So we need to hire people, we need to hire women. My entire staff is in, for my governor's race, um, you know, the leadership for the most part is women. And that I think is, is critical. I see. Women have all the power, Sonny, I tell you. Uh, yes, and we're, <coughs> we're uh, glad that uh, they do. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, in, the, uh, in Maryland, of course, uh, we, are, we have the highest median household income, making it the wealthiest state in the nation. Is there room for improvement in Maryland? Well, yes. I mean, it, the, the problem that we have is we have a lot of very wealthy people, but we also have a lot of poor people. So, for example, um, in education, we have the number two minority achievement gap in the country in Maryland. So there's some great schools, and then there's some not very good schools. Yeah. And we need to bridge that economic gap, that education gap, access to health care, um, all of these things we can do in Maryland. Because we're the, the wealthiest state in the country with per capita income, we have the resources to bring everybody up, and, and we need to make sure we do that. So the, the biggest issue I think facing Maryland right now is the economy and bringing jobs back. We, unfortunately, many of our jobs flee from Maryland to Virginia. Um, our, our, every day we're losing small businesses. Um, we've had over 7,000 small businesses leave Maryland in the last seven years. We've had uh, 85, we have 85% more people unemployed now than we did seven years ago in Maryland because jobs have left, manufacturing, all gone practically from Maryland, very little left. So is that the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the basis for your Build It in Maryland job plan? Yeah, and, and there's a lot of parts of that. But for example, we're the number one research dollars in the country. Johns Hopkins um, is the number one institution. We have the most dollars coming into Maryland for research. But in terms of tech transfer, which means taking all those great products that are conceived of in Maryland and producing them, we produce them elsewhere. We're 39th in tech transfer. So we should be building those products in Maryland, producing those products in Maryland, and with a particular focus on life sciences mm -hmm. and cybersecurity. And the reason why for life sciences is we're the state that has the National Institute of Health. We're the state that has Johns Hopkins, the top hospital in the country, 21 in the last 22 years in the University of Maryland. We're also the state that has NSA, Cyber Command Center. We also, besides having the highest per capita, we have the smartest people in terms of advanced degrees. So we have the workforce. We're right outside the federal government. We have a very smart state. We need to focus on these industries of life sciences and cybersecurity. And we have the, um, in Montgomery County, we have the uh, National Cybersecurity Center of Excellence. You mentioned that. Yeah. Um, now we just have a minute or two remaining. Would you like to say a few words to our viewers uh, about your aspirations? Oh, well, yes. Um, I make sure everybody registers to vote. The, the deadline is April 9th. The election is going to be June 24th. That's the primary. Um, and it's a, quite stark. It's me against the lieutenant governor. Um, and so there's eight more years of what we've had, 40 straight taxes, driving businesses out of Maryland versus a, a new vision and a fresh start in terms of bringing jobs in. Uh, fixing the education gap, uh, we're getting real transportation projects, cleaning up the environment, and of course public safety. I've been a prosecutor for 22 years. We need our state is the ninth most violent with the fourth most homicides, and we need somebody that actually cares about criminal law and and that cares about diversity and making sure the Asian American community is part of government uh, and working with us to to solve so many of our problems. Yes, thank you for that. I um, have to say that in Maryland, our um, people of uh, Asian origin uh, have a lot at stake, of course, in selecting uh, the governor of the state of Maryland. And um, from what we have seen, uh, your uh, attorney generalship has, of course, yielded a lot of uh, gains for the state of Maryland. Uh, you are a Montgomery County resident as well as I. And so we, we value your uh, residency in Maryland and we, in, in Montgomery County and look forward to your contributions uh, towards the welfare of our state that we very much love and care for. 
Thank you. Well, I'll be the first governor ever elected from Montgomery County. We've never had one, and that'll be good for the interests of Montgomery County so they, they don't continue just to think of us as the bank for the rest of the state. Yeah. And my lieutenant governor, Jolene Ivey, is from Prince George's County, so we'll, we'll have both those counties uh, as part of our government. That's excellent. Thank you for being Thank on my you, show. Thank you, I appreciate it very much. This is Sonny Siegel signing off from Who's Who. Hope to see you again next month at the same place in the same time.